Hi, this is Kelly from Essex Ham and welcome to Foundation Online, getting you started with amateur radio. Hello and welcome to this video in the Foundation Online training series. My name's Pete and I look after Essex Ham's online training course, Foundation Online. I'm here to give you some tips on how you can pass your foundation exam. If you're taking your foundation exam online, you'll need to make sure that you have all the technical stuff in place. The good news is you'll have a week or so to get set up and a practice call with an RSGB invigilator. We do have a separate video on how to prepare for your exam online at home, but as a quick reminder, you'll need a webcam, speakers and a microphone, a stable internet connection, and to install some software from a company called TestReach. You'll find full details in the video on our website. So prepping for your online exam, you'll need to bring with you a pen or a pencil and a blank sheet of paper. Now the only thing you're allowed in the exam is the exam booklet that we talk about in our course, but you are allowed to bring in a scrap of paper. A good tip here, for instance, is the triangles. If you've got them in your head, VIR and PIV, you can't write them on the paper in advance, but as soon as the exam starts, use a blank sheet of paper and write down the triangles. It's also worth bringing a ruler into the exam. There's quite a lot of information on the four page exam booklet and it can stop you making silly mistakes. Of course, the exam booklet itself, the four page exam booklet, you are allowed to print that out and bring that with you for the exam. It's also worth bringing a basic calculator with you. You don't need an expensive scientific calculator, a basic one will do. The one shown on the screen here was a pound from a local pound shop. Just a reminder, you can't use your smartphone or a computer's calculator. It does have to be a separate, standalone, silent calculator. And it's not a bad idea to bring a drink in with you, just to uh, calm the nerves. So some tips for the actual exam itself. First off, there are plenty of free marks available, and that's all thanks to the exam booklet. If you see a question asking about frequencies, or wavelengths, or the band plans, or allocations, who can use what frequencies, or how to convert DB, uh, the answers are in that four page exam booklet. Bring it with you and make sure in advance you know how to use it. Again, on the Hamtrain website and in our course, we do have a separate video on how to use the booklet properly. Here's an example of an easy free mark. One of our students recently took a mock question and got it wrong by not looking in the booklet. The question was asking about a frequency and the answer was on page two of the exam booklet. Again, look out for free easy marks. Every time you see a frequency mentioned, look it up and see if there are any special conditions. You'll also need to get used to the question styles and there are some weird questions out there. A common one is where you'll see a right answer, but it's the right answer for the wrong question. So read all four answers carefully and make sure you're picking the right answer for the right question. Sometimes when you see the answers A, B, C and D, you look at A and think, yep, that's the right one. Do read carefully though, because there might be a better answer in answers B, C or D. Occasionally you get the kitchen sink question. These are kind of designed to trip you up, but don't be fooled. A good example of that is something like, uh, I don't know, uh, today in June, you're having a conversation on upper sideband using a Yagi at 10 watts in a hotel in Wales. How often should you give your call sign? Effectively, most of that is rubbish. They're just asking about frequency of call sign. Don't get tripped up by some of the uh, awkward other parts of a question. Things like multipliers, so easy to do. Get your kilohertz or megahertz around the wrong way. Always look at uh, numbers very, very carefully. Kilohertz, megahertz, little m is milli and a large m is mega. Uh, you can be out quite a lot by getting the uh, wrong multipliers. So do keep an eye out in questions to make sure you're looking at the right values. And also use of most, and I'll give you some examples of that in a second. So just a few things to look out for when it comes to the question styles. Here's a good one, this is an actual RSGB question. Which action will be most effective in extending the range for transmitting and receiving VHF or UHF? And there are two answers here that both look plausible, increasing the height and increasing the power. And again, the question is asking which is the most effective. And of course, the answer in that case would be increasing the height, 
not increasing the power. Another one, you're trying to use your local 70 centimeter repeater from a handheld radio in your bedroom, but you can't make contact. What is the best course of action? Move closer to a window, open the window and change your polarization, connect your handheld to a rooftop antenna or increase the power. It might be tempting to say, I don't have a rooftop antenna, so moving nearer a window is the right answer, or upping your transmit power, but of course they're looking for rooftop antenna. You'll find the actual answers, of course, in the syllabus and your training material. So for both of those, the answers came from the syllabus. Understand that higher antennas are preferable to higher power as they improve transmit and receive performance. And recall that outdoor antennas will perform better than indoor antennas. They're the answers that are being looked for, so don't, uh, don't overthink, uh, just uh, think of what they're actually asking, the syllabus point they're trying to get an answer to, and make sure you pick the most appropriate answer. Now there are some real stinkers out there, and we actually asked some genuine mock questions to experienced amateurs a while ago to see how they fared, and some of them are quite nasty. Here's a couple that we stumbled across. So this question here, overreaching when on a ladder may cause concerns to passers-by, the person to fall off, a hard hat to give less protection, or a poorly constructed and loose-fitting job. You could actually argue that most of those would actually apply. Uh, overreaching on a ladder might cause concern to a passerby, might cause the person to fall off, uh, might cause the person to fall in a way that a hard hat won't protect them, and it might result in a bad job. So all of those answers actually apply, but of course the official answer is B. Another good example, at what power levels do EMF restrictions apply? 5, 6.1, 10 or 50 watts? So the answer the RSGB is looking for here is B, 6.1 watts ERP, as you'll find in the training material. However, I would also argue that those restrictions also apply at 10 watts and 50 watts. So B, C and D would all apply. Uh, if you do get a stinker of a question, uh, do your best. Uh, and if you think the question's unfair, A, make sure the invigilator knows. B, tell the RSGB afterwards, especially if you've just missed the exam passed by a mark or so. And also let us know here at Essexam uh, so we can perhaps uh, add a warning to some of the questions. But there are some nasty ones out there. So just be aware, basically. Time. Okay, so as you'll probably know, for foundation, you get 60 minutes. Do use it wisely. For this video, we had a look at some recent mocks to see how people are doing. Uh, here's one. Uh, this person got 17, so they failed by two marks. They took 15 minutes. Here's another one. Only one mark away, they took 13 minutes. And this one here, two marks away, and they took 10 minutes to complete the test. So if you look at this, 10 minutes for 26 questions means they're answering every question on an average of about 23 seconds. That's barely enough time to read the question carefully, let alone read all four answers, consider it, pick the best one and double check your results. You don't get any prizes for rushing through the exam and uh, the number of people that fail by a couple of marks because they've rushed it, it is quite sad. Don't rush, no prizes for doing it. And the number of people that just miss by a mark because they didn't properly read a question uh, or they only read one answer or they didn't check their work. So do take the time. I would say at least 30 minutes uh, is plenty of time. That's a minute a question, uh, including sort of double checking. Take the full hour if you need it. Anything under 30 minutes, you're rushing it. And certainly a 10 minute exam, you're definitely gonna struggle and you're not gonna be checking properly there. So do uh, take your time. Uh, a reminder, the pass mark is 19 out of 26, which means you can get seven questions wrong and still pass. So if you are weak in an area, like maybe transmitters and receivers or technical basics, you can fail the entire section and still pass. So don't stress about uh, a particular module that maybe you're struggling with. Mocks, do use mocks well. Uh, mocks can be your best friend. So do use them well. Do lots of different mocks, get comfortable with answering the questions and the question style. Don't rely on mocks though. Uh, you do need to understand the syllabus. Obviously, if you're on the Foundation Online course, all of the uh, syllabus is delivered to you in handy chunks. So do work through the course, don't just rely on the mocks. Do use a good source for mocks. There are a few websites out there that are out of date. Uh, there was a major syllabus change in 2019 and some of the mocks out there 
are on uh, websites that haven't yet been updated to the current mocks. So uh, just be a little wary of some of the ones that are out there uh, that don't use the current syllabus. And use mocks to identify your weaknesses. Don't just go, yep, great, I've passed. Look at the questions that you're getting wrong. Is there a pattern? Are you struggling with certain topics? If so, perhaps go back and revise again. Obviously the ham train course includes loads of mocks. Do use them. The main course has a halfway mock and a mock at the end. Those of you that are kind enough to make a donation to us also get access to a bunch of extra mocks, including what we call our challenging mock, uh, where we have all the hard questions uh, all compiled together. So we have a pool of loads and loads of questions. Those kind enough to make a donation, either those on the course or not on the course, do get access to our famous extra mocks. And one question we asked is how accurate our mock tests are. So as uh, you may know, if you've done the course, uh, at the end, we do ask for your feedback and we ask how our questions compared with the exam questions. Uh, here's what we got. 64% say our mocks are pretty close. 12% say that the exam questions were easier. 19% say the questions were harder than our mocks. And 5% say they were absolutely completely different. So uh, take your pick. That's from 429 people that responded to the survey. 64% say they're pretty close. That's about two thirds. So uh, we're obviously on the right track. Any feedback, of course, gratefully appreciated. One other little tip for you, and this comes courtesy of one of the RSGB's online invigilators. He suggested that we mention this one. The syllabus, so the syllabus document can be found on the RSGB website, and it lists out all the items that are examinable point by point. Being honest, the document isn't the most friendly document in the world, and it is actually intended for trainers, not for students. But nonetheless, it does break down point by point what can be asked at the exam. So if you do have any doubts or any questions, take a look at the specific point in the syllabus, or just have a flick through it and get used to what might be coming up in the exam. Definitely a useful tip, take a look at the syllabus. It's available on the RSGB website for foundation, intermediate, and for full. And there's a shortcut link on the screen at the moment to www dot sxham.uk forward slash syl which will take you to the rsgb syllabus page so nerves that's the big one isn't it a lot of us haven't done exams for years maybe since school so uh, we all do get a little bit nervous uh, about exams uh, i would say don't worry too much don't stress and uh, and do your best uh, the invigilator is there to try and put you at the e at your ease uh, you do a practice uh, run through video with them uh, they don't really want you to fail so you know don't stress too much you can always retake it if things don't go right. And at the end of the day, nobody dies. If you make a mistake, if you don't get it right, you'll get it second time around. Just really don't stress. The invigilator doesn't care that you've made a couple of silly mistakes. Uh, it's probably only you that's worrying about it. So don't worry, it's a hobby. Nobody dies, don't stress, do your best. And uh, if the worst comes to the worst, just retake it, no sweat. It's also worth mentioning at this stage that not only is everyone not good at exams, some people do really struggle with exams for a number of reasons, dyslexia being a fairly common one. If you do think you're gonna struggle, maybe you do suffer from dyslexia, maybe reading and writing isn't your strong point, maybe you've got a medical condition that makes things difficult for you, do talk to the RSGB before you book your exam. They are very approachable, you can email them or call them, and we do have a special video up on our YouTube channel and also in our foundation on Online course that explains some of the options available to you and how you can get that extra help. So if you do need extra help for your exam, do make sure you ask. If you want to find the video, it's up on the Essex Ham YouTube channel or in our Foundation Online course. What we're going to do now is play a short extract uh, of an interview with a guy called Gareth, who actually works for the BBC World Service. He did uh, an online exam uh, with us a little while ago, and this just gives you a bit of a feel as to what to expect for the actual exam. The RSGB sends you the software, it's an app basically you put onto your laptop for the exam and, and you get that a few days in advance and it gives you a tutorial on just how to use the exam. And I thought, oh, you know, why, why would you need to do a tutorial? But it turned out actually to be quite useful just so that all that stuff about navigating around the screen, being confident that you'd selected the right answer and that it had been registered, all that stuff that you'd probably fret about under the pressure of an exam had just been done in advance. So it was almost like an exam on doing the exam. So once I came in, here it loaded up on the laptop the app worked okay I clicked my way through it I was able to then go back and check my answers and um, and then clicked submit and then and of course 
almost, well, effectively, instantaneously, it then gave me a provisional, and it is provisional, I guess, until the grown-ups back at HQ have checked it, but I have been given a provisional pass, so definitely a good day at the office. Thanks very much to Gareth for giving us a bit of an insight as to how the online exam works. So some final tips, don't stress. It's only a hobby and uh, make sure you do your best. Get a good night's sleep before your exam, it's always a good one. Don't rush, do use the time wisely, double check, don't make silly mistakes and just don't rush. No points for rushing. If you need all 60 minutes, make sure you take them. Double check all of your answers, even if you're sure, you're 100% convinced, just read all four answers again and just make sure there isn't a trick in there or there's a slightly better uh, answer that you haven't selected. If in doubt, best guess. You'll quite often find two answers look plausible, two answers look ridiculous. If you really don't know, don't leave anything blank, do take your best guess. And make sure you do use that four page exam booklet. You'll normally get one or two answers from the booklet. Use it and uh, make sure you do get those free marks if you can. So that's it for our hints and tips for the foundation exam. Very good luck to you. Let us know how you get on and uh, please do send us some feedback on the exams. It always helps us to update our mock questions if we know how you got on. The best of luck, don't stress, do your best and I'm sure you'll be on air with your call sign very soon. As a reminder, this video is part of the free foundation online course. If you're studying for Foundation, sign up and get access to all of the course material, including slides, lessons, handouts, videos, quizzes, and our mocks. You can sign up at www.hamtrain.co.uk.